Well, um, thank you. Oh, it does work. Good. Um, so, so thanks to the organizers for uh, for putting this together. You know, the workshop and the school last week, which I wasn't at, and the thing last year. Like, this is this is great. And also, um, I want to thank Craig and Mel for providing this. Uh, this sort of fun space of mathematics for us all to, to work in. Like it's, it's really, you know, math, as, as, as Craig said about Mel and that like I'm sure Barrett will say about Craig, like it would just, math would be a lot uh, poorer, our field would be a lot poorer without, without their contributions. And that's um, in some sense part of the, the theme of my talk um, because, um, you know, <laughs> Okay, so the, a, a conference honoring uh, Mel and Craig, a conference on characteristic p-algebra, this is, what, the eighth, ninth talk? And there has been uh, no talk about tight closure theory. 20 years ago, that would be unthinkable, right? <laughs> that would be impossible. And I think that that is because of the, uh, you know, the, the common wisdom. So, right, so, so Craig's periodization, by the way, hi, Craig. Um, Craig's periodization that he did yesterday, the reason I asked that question is, he said 1985 to 2007 was Smell's, you know, tight closure period, right? Um, and, uh, and what is 2007? To me, what that is, is the year that the preprint by uh, Holger and, uh, and Paul Monsky went up on archive, uh, showing that uh, tight closure does not commute with arbitrary localizations. Um, I say arbitrary on purpose because they said carefully in their talk, um, well, in, the, in their paper, uh, that they don't, that there, are some, that, that, they, that there are some cases they don't cover, inc including open localization, like localizing at a single element. Um, and that's kind of uh, my jumping off uh, point. Um, so I want to say, I want to think of this talk as an invitation uh, to kind of reinvent you know, to have a different perspective on uh, the tight closure operation and similar operations um, that hopefully will make people want to kind of work in it again. Um, and that, that, so, okay, so Brenner and Monsky's, um, I haven't written anything yet, but whatever. Um, so Brenner and Monsky's um, uh, uh, paper, I think, uh, created the following common wisdom. Well. We wanted tight closure to be a geometric operation, right? Like integral closure, like Frobenius closure sort of is. Um, uh, but it doesn't commute with localization. In particular, in uh, Brenner Monsky's paper, they showed that it doesn't work well with uh, de deformation theory. Um, and so therefore, it couldn't be uh, a, a, an, an operation of geometric interest. So let's, so the, the stuff that is actually of geometric interest is the, um, the things that come from tight clo that, that arose in the study of tight closure theory, namely test ideals and uh, certain F singularities, such as F purity and strong, left, strong F regularity, right? Um, but the thing is, um, I think that there is some, some geometry to do here that's, that, uh, that, they left, that, that everybody left on the table, which I'd like to present to you as a meal. Um, <laughs> Now, I'm not a geometer, so I hope, and, and there are definitely people in this room uh, and on this Zoom that know a lot more uh, geometry than, than I do. So, so, like I say, an invitation, you know, people who, who know more geometry than I do. Like, I'm going to show you how to take the, 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 uh, the tight closure of an ideal sheaf or, you know, a sheaf, or a sheaf of, of modules will work, will work the same way and, um, and, and sort of an invitation to, to sort of... Um, see if there is something geometric to, to, to do here. Um, okay, so um, conventions. Um, oh, and the, the other thing is, um, right, so what do I want to say? Um, so R is just going to be a commutative ring. And, um, when I talk about tight closure, uh, R is going to be a characteristic P ring, um, P bigger than zero, um, in the theory in. Right. Um, all right. So, so yeah, so I'm going to basically, um, I'm going to show you for, for various 
closure or even pre-closure operations on, on um, ideals in, in, in sort of a family of rings that's associated with the scheme. Um, I'll show you sort of when you can make a sheaf theory out of it and when that sheaf theory works fairly nicely. So there's sort of varying degrees of niceness um, and the, the coherence is gonna be kind of the big question at, at the end. Like when, when are these, like you take the, the, the closure of a coherent sheaf, when is, it, when is that a coherent sheaf? Uh, it'll be a sheaf, but um, I don't know if it's, when it's gonna be coherent. Assuming that, so, so um, properties of um, pre-closures, um, I'm gonna call them new, New in the sense, I mean, nothing's new in mathematics, right? It's all there for us to discover. But I mean, you know, that, that, that I've identified that are important properties. Um, uh, we're going to have something called open persistence and uh, something called glueability. Okay. Um, and open persistence is going to show you that there's a sheaf, and glueability means uh, that um, you uh, don't have to shrink it down. Um, you'll see what I mean. You'll see what I mean. Um, and so, um, or, so I'm going to show you this sheaf, and then we'll talk about closedness, and then uh, at the end, um, end with a uh, new singularity type. I, I, I say new because, of course, conjecturally, well, because this is going to be between weak F regularity and F regularity. So, conjecture, so conjecturally, it should just, those should all be the same, right? If you're, because weak, you know, weak implies strong, you know, um, uh, Ian's going to talk about some progress on that later in the week, I guess. And uh, um, uh, but uh, but anyway, it's it's new to the extent that if you don't know that 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 uh, weak F regularity is F regularity, then then you don't know then you don't know that this is either of them. <laughs> okay. So um, so many words. All right. So definition. Um, okay, so what's a closure, what's a pre-closure? So um, let S be a poset, um, partially ordered set. Um, okay, so a pre-closure is a function uh, CL from S to S, you know, written you know, x goes to x c l, such that, which is um, um, such that for all x and y in S, uh, x is bounded above by the closure of x, and if x is under y, then the closure of x is under the closure of y. Okay, and um, if CL is idempotent, i.e. the closure of things are closed, um, we call it a closure. So pre means might not be idempotent. So this is, this is all standard terminology from partially ordered set theory. Um, Okay, so I mean, examples of that. So why, why am I going to post sets? Is because uh, you know, if you're talking about ideals, then you can talk about subsets and things. But if you're talking about ideal sheaves, then those aren't really sets, and so you have to um, you have to. But it, there's a post set structure. Um, okay. Um, so um, so if um, if X is a scheme. Um, and if you don't like that, just think algebraic variety. Um, but no, a scheme. So like spec R. Um, then a, um, a pre-closure 
um, CL on X for now is going to be uh, on all the affine open, uh, uh, you know, rings that come from it, right? Uh, uh, is a choice for each affine open U in X of a uh, preclosure also written CL uh, on the ideals of uh, OX of U. So that's, so anyway, so if you just have that, you can't really do much. Um, so that's why we need these, these uh, conditions of open persistence and glueability. Right? Um, so definition, these are all definitions so far. Um, so, and so of course I say pre, because it might just be a closure and then you take, yeah. So pre-closure, Um, CL on a scheme X is openly persistent um, if um, for any um, con uh, Containment of affine opens, uh, UV affine opens uh, in X, and um, uh, G, the corresponding ring homomorphism. Uh, so here, what U is spec S, V is spec R, right, and G is like the the corresponding ring map going the other way. Um, for all ideals I of R, uh, G of I closure is contained in IS closure. Okay. So I call this openly persistent because it's persistent on these in containments of opens. Right? Um, and the reason I use persistence is because this is, you know, from, from tight closure theory, persistence is, is you know, you, you want to say that, well, okay, so, so for basically any ring map, if your base ring is good enough, um, uh, then, you know, the tight closure should persist along that ring map. But it turns out open persistence is a much easier thing to satisfy, um, uh, basically because G of R naught is contained in S naught. Um, but anyway. Um, so, um, so fact, if, um, if, um, it, I'm going to say if CL is openly persist, openly persistent on, say, spec R, then, um, what happens, uh, if you, then I closure RF is contained in IRF closure for all F and R, right? Because that's just the basic affine, the, the, ba the basic open sets in, in uh, spec R. Right? Okay, so um, proposition, I'll call this proposition A, uh, tight closure is openly persistent. Right, so, and here X on uh, any Ethereum FP scheme. Um, and it's just because, um, so basically the reason, I won't give a proof, I'll give a reason. Um, G, so if uh, R to S is open, uh, in, in that sense, right, it corresponds to a, a containment of affine open sets. Uh, then G of R naught is contained in S naught. And in tight closure theory, the only problem with persistence is that, you know, the, the things in R naught might, like, go to zero or go inside of the minimal primes of S, and that just never happens. It's because of going down. Uh, so it's, it's flat, and, you know, any 
uh, inclusion of, of opens is flat, and so flat implies going down, and that means that the minimal primes behave well in such a way that G of R naught is contained in S naught. Um, okay, so theorem one slash definition. So let CL be an openly persistent uh, preclosure on a scheme X. So we're going to extend to a preclosure on um, the ideal sheaves. IDSH, the, the, the post set of ideal sheaves on X. Um, or in OX, I don't know the terminology. Um, as follows. Um, okay. So for, um, for such an ideal sheaf, um, what do you do? Um, and for uh, S in, um, sorry, for U open in X, I need to, sh so and uh, S in OXU, is in I of U if, this is the definition, um, of I of U, <laughs> I'm sorry, I closure of U. Uh, if what? Um, if there, if um, for any X in X, there exists uh, affine, open V with X in V and V is contained in U and S restricted to V is in uh, I of V closure in OX of V, which makes sense because OX of V is a ring and I of V is an ideal in it and, and we've defined the closure on all these uh, rings. Uh, for all the oh, affine open sets, right? So, um, so anyway, so this at least gives you an assignment for each uh, U of a set I closure of U. But in fact, this is this this, this actually makes yes. Are you working with quasi coherent ideal sheaves or no? Ideal Any ideal sheaf. Okay. Yeah. Later on, coherence and quasi coherence will come up in a big way, but not yet. Um, then I closure is, in fact, a sheaf of ideals. And CL is a, here I'm going to say, is a preclosure on the set of ideal, on the post set of ideal sheaves of X. Um, and if X is an Ethereum, and uh, CL is idempotent on each affine open, then uh, CL is idempotent. In other words, you have an actual closure uh, on the ideal sheaves. Yeah. Um, and um, one more statement, which is part of this theorem. Um, moreover, uh, given an open U and uh, S in OXU, we have S in I closure of U, if and only if there exists uh, um, an open affine cover of U 
such that uh, rol alpha, so well, meaning that, that um, u is the union of the u alphas, and these are all open affines inside of u. Um, for all alpha, s restricted to u alpha is in uh, uh, i of u alpha closure in uh, ox of u alpha. Um, and the proof is, is, you know, straightforward, but would take the next 10 minutes if I wanted to actually do it, because you know how proofs in th sheaf theory are. Um, but it really is straightforward. It's just, you know, applying sheaf stuff to this. Okay. But um, I said exists an open affine cover, and I'm saying that you have to, like for all these u's, you have to sort of find an f, and for every x in, in uh, I guess in u, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, for every x in u, you have to find sort of a different v and so on. So, but we, what you want is you want some flexibility, right? You want to you be able to say, oh, well, I just want, once I go down to, to like some affine open in u, I want to say, okay, so i closure of that v should be i of v closure. And that's what we need glueability for. Um, so, glueability. Right. Um, right, so first of all, corollary I star exists. You take a, a, a sheaf of ideals in, in a Ethereum FP scheme, and then you can take its tight closure in this way. Okay, so glueability. Um, definition. Let CL be uh, an openly persistent uh, closure oper pre closure operation on spec um, on spec r um, let's say um, cl by definition is glueable over uh, X, if um, for all collections F alpha in R naught, R naught, if you, is the complement of the union of the minimal primes, um, 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 and for all G in the ideal generated by the F alphas, um, and for all ideals i of r, and for all x in r, <laughs> um, if x over 1 is in the um, closure in i f alpha, uh, for all alpha, then x over 1, I just need g in the radical of this. Um, then x over 1 is in the closure of ig. And these are taken in the, the corresponding localized uh, rings. Um, and then um, um, for a scheme x, cl is glueable over x if it's glueable on all affine opens. All right, and my chalk broke, so let's see if there exists another one. There's a good one. Okay, um, can I be here? I can be here, right? Um, so proposition B, um, so this is going to show that there's a connection with, with uh, um, commuting with localization at single elements. Um, if CL is openly persistent over spec R and IF closure equals I closure localized at F for all F and R, then it's global. And 
Oh man, I spent so much time uh, uh, preparing for you an example of a, of a global one that does not commute with localization at, at single elements, uh, but there isn't really time to present it. I'll just say what it is. Um, so, um, I'll, well, I'll just say fact. The converse uh, fails. There exists a counterexample arising, I'll say arising from zeroth local cohomology. Uh, basically, you have an idea, like the closure is like, if you have an ideal in a ring, you, you, you delete all the, the uh, zero dimensional primary components. Um, so that's, that turns out to be a global closure operation um, that is not, um, uh, that, that is not, that doesn't uh, commute with localization at single elements, even in a two dimensional um, power series ring over a field. Okay. Okay. So, um, proposition C, tight closure is global uh, over any uh, Ethereum FP scheme. Um, and yeah, and I wrote out the proof here, but um, <laughs> but it is. It's. I mean, it it comes. If you've worked with tight closure theory, you, you can sort of imagine how the the proof would go. You look like you know G is in your radical of your ideal generated by your F alphas, but you might as well just take F one through F n um, for uh, for each of the localized ones. You take a C i that is kind of tests for the tight closure of your of your X in that thing. But those that but because of the condition that all your Fs avoided all the uh, minimal primes, your CIs also have to then avoid the minimal primes of R when you delocalize. And then you just take the product of the CIs and, and you, uh, 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 you present G as a, lin or G to the N as a linear combination of, you know, some powers of, of, of F and then there you go. Um, and so now G to the N, times c uh, x to the q is in i bracket q, and then, and then there you, for all q. Uh, and your ends can vary wildly, but that's, that's okay. Okay, so now I've talked through the proof. <laughs> um, and I guess that's, if you have a, you know, big test element, then there's an easier proof, but you don't actually need it um, for this. So, Theorem two. And this is where the coherence is going to come in. Um, let CL be a gluable um, preclosure on a scheme X. Let I be a quasi coherent. I'm just going to call it QC, um, ideal sheaf. And let S be an OX of U, um, where U is a open. Then S is in I closure of U, if and only if, for all affine opens V in U, um, S restricted to V is in I of V closure. Um, moreover, for all affine open V, I of V closure equals I closure of V. Exactly what one wants. So, um, this means that, um, that this is true of, of tight closure as well. Um, so, what about quasi-coherence 
of I closure. Um, so let R be a ring. Uh, let CL be a glueable preclosure on spec R. Then the following are equivalent for all F and R. I F closure equals uh, I closure localized at F. B I tilde closure is quasi coherent. And C I tilde closure is equal to I closure tilde. Um, so right, so so somehow this this now comes to the to the fore. Now the question of whether tight closure commutes with localization at single elements for a particular ideal and for a particular ideal is exactly the question of whether when you take the co corresponding co uh, coherent sheaf of ideals, you take its tight closure, is that, does that remain quasi-coherent? Spent a lot of time on math signet looking up stuff about criteria for checking quasi-coherence other than, you know, the definition or push forwards and uh, like I said, I don't know much. <laughs> um, so, okay. Um, and then, uh, let's see. Here's a, a new singularity type. Another, you know, we just had one last talk. Now let's have one this talk. Uh, <laughs> and it's kind of a non-local F singularity type. So let's say that R is um, semi of regular if um, for all ideal sheaves I, I equals I star. And equivalently, if X is spec R, uh, it, uh, is to say that RF is weakly F regular for all uh, F and R. And I know nobody's defined weakly F regular this, uh, uh, this week, but it just means that every ideal is tightly closed. So it's, you know, so it's equivalent to say that every ideal in, in R F is tightly closed for every F. Um, and so what do you have? So you have F regularity, so just, yeah, two more results. Uh, F regularity implies semi F regularity implies weak F regularity. It's more or less obvious. Um, but proposition, if R is a Jacobson ring, for instance, final, finitely generated over a field, right, then uh, uh, R is semi F regularity, it's semi I'm going to say semi if and only if weak. Semi if regular if and only if weakly if regular. Um, and so then you might say, oh, well, OK, so then maybe it's just the same as weak F regularity in general. But if it is, uh, then a big thing would be proved because here's another proposition. Let R be weakly F regular. Suppose that for all prime ideals, such that R localized as P is weakly, weakly F regular, uh, R localized as P is also semi F regular. So for instance, if you knew that semi F regularity and weak F regularity were true for local rings, even just local rings of R, then R itself is F regular. Not just semi F regular, but F regular. So what does this mean? This means that for Jacobson rings, they're equivalent. Um, but if you knew that they were equivalent in, uh, for arbitrary, uh, in, in local rings, then you would know that, uh, then you would solve this uh, major conjecture that weak F regularity localizes. And I'm sorry for going over time, uh, but uh, thank you for your attention. Um, maybe we could have one question, since we're a little late. Uh, ready? Uh, Craig has a question. 
Do you have a question, Craig? I think that was just a clap. That was a clap. Okay. <laughs> I guess, I mean, the only comment would be that last thing. It's, it's uh, like Murphy's uh, result, your equivalents. Uh, yeah, I guess it's the same kind of idea. The proof is the same kind of idea. Well, but, but well, no, it's it's just well, it's it's just because maximal ideals contract to maximal ideals, um, is is kind of where it comes from. And and since weak F regularity is local on maximal ideals, and um, that's kind of where it comes from. I, I don't think. Yeah, I didn't prove it like like Murthy's thing. I, I didn't need I didn't need any accountability argument or anything. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. I think uh, in the interest of time, we'll uh, postpone any other questions to the tea bag. All right. Thank you very much.